everyone and dr beena here today's topic is lens it is a transparent biconvex crystalline structure location is patellar fossa that is a saucer shaped depression and the posterior capsule of the lens is attached to the vitreous with vigorous ligament a circular area of attachment between the hyaloid face and the lens capsule that is a potential space is there called burger space so you can see the burger space in this uh, diagram so this is the uh, burger space in the back posterior capsule attaching to the hyaloid face of the vitreous now the dimensions of the lens equatorial diameter of the lens is 6.5 mm at birth and increases to 9 to 10 mm in second decades of the life thickness 3.5 mm at birth and increases to 5 mm with increase in age the weight is 255 mg at 40 to 50 years of age then the refractive index that is at nucleus it is 1.42 and at cortex it is 1.38 now the by a microscopic stratification of the lens it has got a capsule superficial cortex with three zones uh, uh, c1 alpha c1 beta and c2 and the deep cortex c3 and c4 and then the nucleus that is the bio micro microscopic stratification of lens and at a uh, surgical anatomy of the lens is uh, it is uh, described as capsule cortex epinuclear plate and the nucleus so you can see here the cortex and the epinuclear uh, plate then the heart nucleus now the structure of the lens first we'll pass on to the lens capsule that is the thickest basement membrane in the body 2 to 20 micrometer thickness and it consists of typho collagen and the glycosaminoglycans and thinnest at the posterior pole so the ultra microscopy shows lamellar appearance that is lamellae of fine filaments so lens cap uh, capsule is the thickest basement membrane of the in the body which of 2 to 20 micrometer thickness and it consists of typho collagen and glycosaminoglycan and they are, this capsule is thinnest at the posterior pole lens capsule is similar to other basement membrane in the body that is glomeruli blood vessels spleen and lung so it is almost similar to the uh, basement membrane of these organs and the pseudo exfoliation of the lens capsule means abnormal formation of capsule like material on the lens capsule ciliary process and the posterior iris layer so this abnormal formation of capsule like oh, Uh, materials on this uh, lens capsule ciliary process and posterior iris layer is called the pseudo exfoliation of lens capsule the true exfoliation is the lamellar splitting of the capsule that is usually found among the glass blowers so that is the lamellar splitting of the lens capsule now the anterior lens epithelium so it consists of three zones central zone is cuboidal cells with round ep a epically located nuclei and the normally no mitosis occurs here metaplasia occurs fibroblast and shield cataract is formed and the glaucum plaque enhances metaplasia produces then the intermediate zone that is smaller and more cylindrical cells so uh, there mitosis also occurs so you can see here uh, the capsule uh, then the uh, subcapsular epithelium and the lens fibers at the loss part and now the germinative zone is consist of columnar peripheral cells and pre equatorial uh, region actively divide to form the new cells and new cells migrate posteriorly and then the lens fibers form comes and the dysplasia of posterior subcapsular cataract and radiation etc dysplasia occurs in this uh, conditions so here you can see the various layers and the real lens capsule nuclear fibers and the cortical fibers and the bow region etc lens epithelium is metabolically very active has a prominent cytoskeletal framework uh, lacking membranes of the cells have gap junctions contain sodium potassium atpase and the acid phosphatase enzymes then the epical membrane of the lens epithelium interfaces epical membrane of fiber cells and the epical 
epithelial fiber cell interface. Now the lens fibers. So they are derived from the anterior epithelium and hexagonal in cross section. New fibers are laid upon the older one and they contains high amount of ribosomes. So high ribosomal content is there in the lens fibers. New fibers have nuclei temporarily and later it disappears. So the new fibers have uh, some nuclei temporarily but later on it disappears. Then the lens bow or the nuclear bow. What is lens bow or the nuclear bow? The areas which anterior and posterior fibers meet are called the sutures. They are two Y-shaped sutures in the early stages of human lenses. So the area of the anterior fiber meeting the posterior fiber, that area is called the sutures. There are two Y-shaped sutures in the early stages of human lens. Later on, there will be irregular dendritic pattern forms. So late in the early stage, there will be a Y-shaped suture. Then later on, it will form a dendritic pattern. So here you can see in the, that is the anterior uh, 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 capsule, then the anterior epithelial, superficial epithelial cells, that is columnar type. Then the lens fibers are seen this. These are the lens fibers and these are the bow of lens, that is uh, arrangement of nuclei which is seen and finally in there are Y-shaped sutures forming the anti bow nuclear uh, lens. Now ciliary sonules. Sonules of sin or suspensory ligaments of the lens. This uh, it is called the uh, ligament of suspensory ligament of lens or sonules of sin. They run from the ciliary body and fuses into the lens capsule at the equator. So they start from the ciliary body and finally fuses onto the capsule at the equator. Fibers are made up of glycoproteins and mucopolysaccharides. So these fibers, sonular fibers are made up of glycoproteins and the mucopolysaccharides. Microfibrils have a diameter of 8 to 40 nanometers. So these microfibrils have a diameter of 8 to 40 nanometers. There are three types of sonular fibers. First type fibers are thick and strong fibers. The second type of fibers are thin and flat. And the third type of fibers are very fine and run circular. So there are three different types of fibers. Now the sonular fibers have 7 percentage of cysteine amino acid and failure to convert the amino acid homocysteine into cysteine results in the broken sonules and dislocated lens in homocystinuria. You, you, you have studied the sulfur containing amino acid metabolism in that there is a inborn error in the metabolism known as homocystinuria where the homocysteine is excreted in the urine due to the increased amount of homocysteine. That is due to some enzyme deficiency. But here what happens is the homocysteine cannot be converted to cysteine due to enzyme deficiency. And then if there is less cysteine in the sonule, then there will be a uh, failure to convert uh, here the failure to convert the homocysteine to cysteine, which will result in the broken sonule. So the sonules will be broken. So what happens is dislocation of the lens. So one of the important symptom of homocystinuria is the uh, dislocation of lens. So that is due to the, the poor conversion of the homocysteine to cysteine. Now the biochemical composition of the lens. Composed of 65% water and 34% proteins. Other constituents are lipids, inorganic ions and the glucose that together constitute 1%. In water, lens is relatively dehydrated organ. So it is a relatively a de dehydrated organ because it needs transparency. Dehydration is maintained by the active sodium pump. So this dehydration is maintained by the active sodium pump. Cortex is more hydrated. No significant alteration in the lens with lens water with the age. So age doesn't have any effect on the water content of the lens. Now we'll pass on to the lens proteins. So what are the lens proteins? Sometimes it may ask for a, a one question may come lens protein. So lens proteins are divided into soluble proteins, crystallines, that is 85 percentage and the insoluble proteins, uh, that is uh, uh, insoluble albuminoids. So the alpha crystallines, 
uh, then the soluble crystallines are again div uh, divided into alpha crystalline beta crystallines and the gamma crystallines so <coughs> then scas proteins are first divided into soluble crystallines 85 percentage and insoluble albuminoids 15 percentage and soluble crystallines again alpha beta and gamma uh, now the soluble lens crystalline that is almost 88 percentage of the total lens protein alpha crystallines are largest crystallines accounts for the 31 percentage of the protein total protein and the beta crystallines most abundant that is 55 percentage of the total lens protein is constituted by the beta crystallines and the gamma crystallines the smallest crystalline uh, age related uh, loss is occurring to the gamma crystalline. So, when uh, uh, age advances, the gamma crystallines are lost. Protein content of the lens is higher than that of any organ in the body. So, the protein content of the lens is higher than the any of the organ in the body. Other minor proteins in the lens are phosphoprotein, glycoprotein, lipoproteins and fluorescent proteins. So, there are a variety of proteins in the lens. As lens ages, soluble alpha crystallines get gradually converted to albuminoids. That is, soluble one is converted to insoluble alb albuminoids as the age advances. So, the cortex is rich in crystallines and the nucleus is rich in albuminoids. Now, the amino acids in the lens. All amino acids except tryptophan, cysteine and the hydroxyproline are present in the lens. So, almost all amino acids are present except tryptophan, cysteine and the hydroxyproline. Higher concentration of amino acid in the lens compared to the aqueous humor and the vitreous humor. So, there are more uh, amino acids when compared to the uh, amino acid content of the aqueous humor and the vitreous humor. So, there are amino acid content is higher in lens. Amino acids are relatively transported, uh, amino acids are actively transported into the lens ensure the protein synthesis uh, is not hampered. So, uh, usually amino acids are actively transported into the lens so that protein synthesis occurs in uh, required amount and the protein synthesis is not affected. Uh, uh, that is why uh, actively amino acids are transported into the lens. Amino acid concentration of lens is not affected by aging, fasting or starvation. So, the concentration is not affected by either aging, uh, fasting or starvation. Next is glutathione. Glutathione is a chief constituent of the lens. You know what is glutathione? It is a tripeptide, gamma glutamyl cystinyl glycine. Glutamic acid, glycine and cysteine together forms a tripeptide that is called the glutathione. Glutathione is one of the chief constituent. In the, it exists in the reduced state that is GSH in the lens. So, reduced glutathione is present in the cells and it acts as a antioxidant in the cell. So, reduced glutathione is essential for the uh, lens as an antioxidant. Now, we will pass on to the carbohydrates. Lens contains glucose, fructose and glycogen. These are the main carbohydrate content in the lens. Glucose level is of the lens is 20 to 120 milligram percentage. Its main source is from aqueous humor. Glucose in the lens is one tenth of the aqueous humor. And the glycogen is mainly in the nucleus and replaces the gamma crystalline with the age. So, glycogen is mainly seen in the nucleus which is later on uh, replaces the gamma crystalline as the ad age advances. Next, uh, uh, carbohydrates, uh, the other things are sorbitol, inositol, gluconic acid and glucosamine. They are also present. Nescorbic acid is present in high concentration in the lens and it is involved in the oxidation reduction system in the lens. So, ascorbic acid, you know what is ascorbic acid? It is vitamin C and it is present in high concentration in the lens for the oxidative reductive reactions. Now, we will pass on to the lipids. What are the lipid contents? Lipids represent 2 percentage of the dry weight of the lens. Lipids are cholesterol 50 percentage, phospholipid 45 percentage and mainly syngomyelins and the glycosingolipids and the ceramides constitute 5 percentage. So, cholesterol, phospholipids and glycolipids and ceramides are the important lipids. They constitute the major part of the lens fibers and decreases in their synthesis or decrease in the synthesis or impaired degradation of these lipids 
uh, will produce membrane damage and the lens opacity so if the lipids are lipid peroxidation occurs or due to or if the uh, lipids are uh, not synthesized proper uh, enough quantity there will be damage of the membrane and that will produce lens opacity now we'll pass on to the metabolic pathways operating in the lens the first is the glucose metabolism occurs via four pathways that is glycolysis Krebs cycle, H M B shunt pathway, and the sorbitol pathway. These are the four uh, met metabolic pathways. So here you can see the various uh, pathways together. That is, glucose is converted to glucose six phosphate, and then it is converted to fructose six phosphate, fructose one six bisphosphate, by and finally to pyruvate. And this pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetyl coenzyme, and then finally go to the TCA cycle that is Krebs cycle and metabolized and then other route is the HMV shunt where the glucose 6-phosphate enters the HMV shunt pathway and then exos mono shunt pathway operates and pentose phosphate is produced and that is again combining with the glycolytic pathway sometimes and the other one is the sorbitol pathway glucose is converted to sorbitol by the sorbitol pathway and from the sorbitol fructose is produced and then uh, to the joints this pathway and uh, finally pyruvate can either can also go to produce lactate also so these are the various four pathways and the glycogen can be synthesized from the glucose 6 phosphate or from the glycogen glucose can be produced so same thing is seen in this diagram also glycolysis hmb shunt sorbitol pathway uh, etc So in this uh, tabulation, we can see the various pathways. Glycolysis here, uh, the intermediates are glucose is phosphate one, fructose one six bisphosphate pyruvate, and it sometimes uh, anaerobic glycolysis, lactase is end product, and the glucose metabolism eighty percentage of the glu um, glucose metabolism operates in glycolytic pathway. In anaerobic glycolysis, two ATPs are produced. Krebs cycle, it's also known as tricarboxylic acid cycle, and products are carbon dioxide, water, 5% of the glucose entered through this Krebs cycle and produces ATP, 32 molecules. HMB shun is, uh, pentoses are the intermediate products, carbon dioxide and NADPH is the final uh, product, and also ribose sugar, and 15% of the glucose enters through this pathway. And the sorbitol pathway, sorbitol and fructose is the intermediates, and lactate also is finally produced, and then two molecules of ATP. So next is the water and the electrolyte transport. Electrolytes and water content of the lens resembles intact cell, while that in the aqueous and vitreous humor resembles that of plasma. So the lens, uh, content, uh, lens water and electrolyte uh, contents are almost same as that of uh, inside the cell. While uh, that in the aqueous humor and the vitreous humor almost corresponds to that water and electrolyte content of the plasma. Sodium potassium ATPs in the anterior epithelium uses ATP to extrude sodium and take up potassium into the cell by the active transport. So the action of sodium potassium ATPs is to extrude the sodium out and the, to take up the potassium into the cell by the active transport utilizing the ATP. So here in this diagram you can see the sodium potassium ATPs where the sodium is extruded out and potassium is taken out in and then various uh, glucose, lactic acid, everything is uh, exchanged within the lens and by the and active transport and the diffusion. Glucose is by the diffusion. So this also again shows the Sodium potassium ATP is pumped here and the diffusion of various substance. Now the cation sodium potassium equivalents to 145 milliequivalents and the anions 50 to 60 milliequivalents per liter. Equilibrium is disrupted if the concentration of the osmotic substance increases in the lens. So if there is a disturbance in the equilibrium, then there will be lens hydration and finally uh, the swelling of the sense, uh, lens occurs. 
that is when there is in equilibrium disturbed concentration of osmotic substance increases in the lens and that will produce hydration and swelling of the lens amino acids are actively transported into a cells and there are three different pumps that is for different kinds of amino types of amino acid different types of uh, transporters are also present that is for acidic amino acid one type of pump and the basic amino acids another type of pump and the neutral for the neutral amino acids another type of pumps like that three different types of pumps are there to uh, transport the amino acids the transfer of cations and amino acids occur only at the anterior surface of, uh, by the active transport and the uh, and also inositol active transport that is transport of cations like uh, sodium and potassium and amino acids occurs through the anterior surface by the active transport then glucose transport occurs by the symbol and the facilitated diffusion so the glucose transport is by the symbol and facilitated diffusion and the uh, cations and amino acids by the active transport now the factors maintaining the transparency that is important just like corneal transparency the lens transparency also is important what are the factors first one is the thin epithelium then second is the regular arrangement of the lens fibers that is lamellar arrangement then little cellular organelles cellular organs are very little and little extracellular space and the orderly arrangement of the lens protein relative dehydration semi permeable character of the lens capsule a vascularity and the antioxidants these are the important factors maintaining the lens transparency when you are asked to write you have to mention all these things and in write in details so the factors maintaining the lens transparency irregular arrangement of the lens fibers that is lamellar conformation that is the one important uh, factor then the single layer of epithelial cells that is thin epithelial cells is the another uh, important factor then semi permeable lens capsule so it is permeability is semi permeability and the relative dehydrated state and the vascularity of the lens and high concentration of reduced glutathione that is the antioxidant property and reduced glutathione in the lens maintains the lens protein in the reduced states ensuring the in integrity of the cell membrane pump so when the reduced glutathione or gsh is present it will maintain the integrity of the cell membrane due to its red uh, antioxidant property then what is character uh, cataractogenesis that means how the cataract develops the factors implicated in in one is senal cataract then another is exposure to uv radiation and a third one is dietary factors then the severe diarrhea sometimes cause and the diabetes and the renal failure these are the factors for the cataractogenesis or development of cataract now the uv radiation how it occurs uv radiation uh, absorbs uh, absorbed by the tryptophan amino acid tryptophan Uh, and then forms the formal kynurnin and uh, then the photosensitization uh, and production of free radical oxygen then the uh, down regulation of sodium potassium atps and that will uh, again produces lens swelling and opacification uv rays absorbed by the tryptophan tryptophan forms the formal kynurnin and that will produces photosensitization and production of free radical oxygen and damage to the uh, da, uh, then the down regulation that is the sodium potassium atp is pump and same is decreased and the lens swelling occurs then what happens in increasing age increasing age has got decreased pump mechanism reversal of sodium potassium ratio Uh, hydration of lens fibers denaturation of lens proteins and then the opacification of cortical lens fibers that is one way now another is reduced oxidative reaction decreased amino acids decreased protein synthesis and then opacification here the synthesis of protein is decreased here the uh, water uh, lens fibers is there and the proteins are there get denatured and the denaturation produces op opacification then the changes in cortical cataract 
progressive decrease in the lens protein and free amino acids levels in the lens. So that is the main cause for the cortical cataract. Conversion of soluble proteins into insoluble proteins and the decrease synthesis of lens proteins and increased protein catabolism and decrease in the level of amino acids due to the leakage from the disrupted membrane. So these are the important causes for the or the changes occurring in the cortical cataract. So alteration in the electrolyte and water content of the lens that is water content increases from immature to hypermature cataract that is water content when the cataract is maturing water content increases. Then sodium and calcium content of the lens increases and the potassium content decreases. So during the development of the cataract potassium content may decrease, sodium and calcium content increases and the water content increases from the immature to the hypermature cataract. Now the nuclear cataract. Dehydration and compaction of the nucleus occurs in this case. Dehydration and the compaction of the lens, nucleus of the lens. Increase in water insoluble proteins. So there will be an increased amount of water insoluble proteins of the lens increases light scattering. And the brown color of the lens due to the urochrome absorbs the light. So brown color of this lens cat cataract in the lens is due to the Eurochrome that which absorbs the light. Now the role of glutathione. We are told already it is an antioxidant. Reduced glutathione is antioxidant. Glutathione is made up of glycine, cysteine and glutamic acid. The chemical name is gamma glutamide cysteinyl glycine. It is a tripeptide. Most glutathione in the lens is red, in the reduced form that is GSH. To GSH plus half O2 produces oxidized uh, glutathione that is GSSG plus water. The GSH level is uh, in the cortex is higher than that in the nucleus. So in the cortical part the GSH level is very, very much more than the new, that in the nucleus. HMB and pathway generates NADPH which maintain the glutathione in the reduced state. So one of the important significance of HMB and pathway is produces an ADPH which is required for the for maintaining the glutathione in the reduced state which is required for the uh, membrane integrity of the lens. Lens proteins contains reduced sul uh, sulfhydryl groups that is PSH group and oxidized disulfide groups PSSP. 2 PSH plus GSSG plus is equal to 2 GSH plus PSSP. So uh, thus decreased glutathione will result in PSH oxidation, alteration in the protein linkage, transparency and their solubility. So when there is reduced GSH that will result in the uh, PSH oxidation. PSH will be there and that will get oxidized and then that will alter uh, the oxidation alteration in the pro so protein linkage alteration transparency and the solubility also affected glutathione provides lens with a major detoxifying mechanism via the glutathione peroxidase so how the glutathione acts as a detoxifying agent that is through the enzyme glutathione peroxidase that is the oxidative damage and protective mechanism as shown in this diagram. How the reduced glutathione is converted to oxidized glutathione and uh, everything is shown. Then the most important is the diabetic cataracts. There are two main theories, sorbitol pathway and the glycosylation pathway. Uh, so the first is the um, sorbitol pathway. Excess glucose is directed into the sorbitol pathway. When there, in the diabetes, you know, there is hyperglycemia. Glucose level in the blood will increase. So, the excess glucose is diverted or directed to sorbitol pathway. That is, glucose is converted to sorbitol by aldose reductase utilizing the NADPH. Then, these uh, sorbitol accumulate in the lens and the NADPH is deplete, uh, depleted and then the uh, when it is depleted, there will be reduced DSH uh, or the reduced uh, glutathione level is decreased and the reduced glutathione also uh, level decreased means uh, there will be water clefts and vacuoles in the uh, lens. Similarly, uh, this uh, 
uh, so orbital accumulation in the lens so osmolarity of the lens increases and the water content increases producing the clefts in the lens there are two mechanism by which sorbitol produces water uh, retention that is one by sorbitol accumulation or, and uh, an adph depletion occurs and then reduced glutathione level will be decreased and then there will be water other other thing is indirectly osmolarity of the lens increases and water content increases non enzymatic glycosylation of the lens protein uh, also occurs that is the second method by the non enzymatic glycosylation that is excessive glycosylation of lens capsule so in the lens capsule there will be glycosylation excess glucose will be added on to the proteins increased fragility of the that when the uh, glucose excess glucose is added on to the lens capsule there will be increased fragility to the lens capsule so it may break easily structural change in enzymes membrane proteins and crystalline in the lens occurs so there will be alteration in the structures of enzymes membrane proteins and the uh, uh, crystalline uh, proteins of the lens so that will finally produces cataract that is the method by glycosylation then uh, one another type of cataract in congenital cat cataract is glycosemic galactosemic cataract that is uh, in bone error in the metabolism where the galactose is accumulated excessive excessive galactose will produce galactitol or dalsitol in the lens and uh, that is by the uh, aldose reductase enzyme this galactitol accumulate in and then the, they draw water and the water in the lens fibers ruptures the membrane and cause the loss of uh, potassium amino acids and inositol so like that cataract develop galactitol accumulate in the lens draws water and the excessive water in the lens will rupture the membrane and causes uh, produces loss of potassium amino acids and inositol another is the cataract due to the uveitis intraocular surgery or after retinite in retinitis pigmentosa that is a clinic, uh, disease condition so due to uveitis that is infection in uveitis influx of plasma components into the aqueous occurs so uveitis when there is in infection and then influx of plasma components into the aqueous occurs and then that will produce finally cataract following vitreo retinal surgery that is after surgery breakdown of blood vitreous barrier sometimes occurs and the posterior subcapsular cataracts will develop following the vitreo retinal surgery and in rp that is retinitis pigmentosa another condition and in, in inherited disorder where the breakdown of the blood vitreous barrier by the destruction of the pigment epithelium pigment epithelium will be destroyed and then there will be break breaking down of the uh, blood vitreous barrier which will lead on to the cataract plasma phospholipids lyso lysophosphatidyl choline and lysophosphatidyl ethanolamine are the implicated and they leak into the eye from the ocular circulation so these plasma phospholipids may leak into the eye from the ocular circulation two unsaturated fatty acid arachidonic acid and dha are also implicated docosahexaenoic acid that is in, commonly seen in the fish oil and etc are the polyunsaturated alcohol polyunsaturated fatty acids so unsaturated fatty acids are also implicated in this development of cataract Macro, macrophage oxidative enzymes can cause lytic effect on the generation of peroxides peroxides so peroxides again lipid membrane uh, will be damaged by the peroxide formation so membrane um, macrophage oxidative enzymes can cause lytic effect lysis of uh, and by the generation of peroxide these peroxides produce membrane lysis now the radiation cataract ionizing radiations like x rays gamma rays beta rays may induce lens vacuoles and lens opacities so by these radiation lens capsule uh, lens vacuoles and opacities are induced initially vacuoles appear in the equator and the posterior subcapsular area so to start with vacuoles appear in the equator and the posterior subcapsular areas there are three mechanism of the damage by the radiation there are increased leakage of potassium 
inositol and glutathan. Second one is decreased incorporation of amino acids into the proteins. And the third one is arrest of cell entering mitosis and the epithelial cell epithelial damage. So these three are the main causes or the mechanism by which the uh, radiation can damage the lens. Now corticosteroid induced cataract. Steroids induced aberrant differentiation and migration of epithelial cells. So in steroids if there is accumulation of steroids they may induce aberrant differentiation and migration of epithelial cells. So other mechanisms are elevation of glucose that is steroids always produce hyperglycemia elevation of glucose inhibition of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme which is present in the uh, chambition pathway so there will be decreased production of NADPH and reduced glutathione which will decrease the in, uh, in, or inhibits the sodium potassium ATPs chemical modification of crystalline can also occur that is disulfide cross links between the lens fibers causes aggregation of lens fibers and thus producing cataract. So chemical modification of crystalline. Crystalline, you know, the crystallines are the soluble proteins in the lens. So when there is any chemical modification, that is disulfide cross links between lens fibers occurs due to this chemical modification, that will cause, if there is disulfide cross cross links between the fibers that will produce aggregation of lens fibers and cataract. So this can produce some cataract. So with this we finish the lens and the structure, biochemical composition, lens proteins, metabolism and then finally the cataract of various types and how the lens transparency is maintained. Thank you.